The leader has to go to the next level before the congregation can go to the next level. You've always heard about these levels. You know about them. But at the bottom line, until the pastor and leader grows to the next level, his church or ministry is not going to go to the next level. If the, if the pastor's still leading like he has 50 people, he's, and, and instead of like he's got 100 people, he's never going to get to 100 because the way you lead at 100 is different than the way you lead at 50. The way you lead at 500 is different than the way you lead at 100. The way I lead at 1,500 is different than the way I led at 75. So you have to make those adjustments. You've seen the stair steps before. You move from chaplaincy to shepherding to equipping to team building, ultimately to becoming an overseer. These are levels of progression. Grow the leader, John Maxwell says. You grow the organization. So whether you're a youth pastor, whether you're a, a, a staff member, whether you're a senior pastor, whether you're a choir director, uh, it doesn't matter what ministry you're involved in, children's ministries, it doesn't matter. If you don't grow yourself, your ability to grow the area of ministry you're assigned to is not going to be effective. When I became an overseer, there's a lot of ministry that I don't do directly anymore. Some people don't like that. That's okay. If you want to to be more hands-on, and that's your gifting in you, I have no complaints with that. My gifting is a little different, and so I have a lot of people who serve in ministry. We baptize probably three to 500 people every year here, and I probably only baptize about 10 out of that 500 because my staff members are going to baptize the other people. We have a lot of pastors who visit the sick and go to the hospitals and are there for the surgeries that I can't be at. In fact, it, it, for a while it became almost a joke that if I showed up at the hospital, it probably meant that you were at your deathbed. So when, whenever I knocked on the door and said, the pastor's here to see you, I promised them you're not dying before I walked in the door because I didn't want them to get the wrong impression, but because we have people who are doing a lot of that pastoral visitation for me. Now, not everybody's at that level. I wasn't at that level for many years of ministry. I was the guy who always went to the hospital, did those things. But at some level, you have to make some different choices about how you're going to spend your time, and you're going to have to invest in people and build teams of people who can do ministry. So it's not just you doing ministry, but you're building teams to do ministry over the period of time. Pastors and leaders have to transition from being reactional and tactical to becoming strategic. React, reactional and tactical. What am I talking about? Most pastors don't step into their leadership role until somebody presents them a problem. And then they come up with a reactionary solution. They're not proactive, they are reacting to a situation. Other pastors are tactical. Tactical thinkers are this kind of person. Right now, all the tactical pastors in the room primarily are concerned about what they're going to preach this coming Sunday or Wednesday. That's the whole focus. What am I going to preach this Sunday? What am I going to preach this Sunday? And they're focused on the assignment at hand, short-term tactical assignments. The strategic thinker, this is what they're thinking. What am I going to preach this Sunday that's going to take our church to where we need to be a year from now? Because I'm taking our people on a journey. I'm not just preaching hodgepodge from week to week. I have a strategic plan that these next six messages are going to take us closer to the next seven messages that are going to help us set us up for the next eight messages that when we get down the road, we're going to be here instead of here. So you have to start think thinking strategically rather than reactional or even tactical in your thinking.